Today in this session, I will be covering the beam designing in STAD Advanced Concrete or which is also well known as RCDC. We will look into different design settings and detailing settings that are available in RCDC for designing of the beam. In the first part, we will cover the designing and detailing settings that we need to make before we proceed ahead for auto design. And mainly we will look into the impact of each and every setting that has when the beam gets designed. In this second section, we will look into some special codal recommendations and in the last section of the session, we will cover some of the redesigning options, redetailing options that are available. In this first section, we will cover the different design and detailing related settings. So we have different set of design settings for the codes for different design codes like the Australian code, ACI code, British code, Euro code, Indian code and so on. But out of all these settings from different codes, there are a few settings which are common in all the codes. So we will look into these common settings which are available for all the design codes. Starting with the design setting which is related to the design of flanged beams. For this, we have two options. We can either select the secondary beams to be designed as flanged beams or we, we can also select to design all the beams with the flanged beam action. For now, let us select the secondary beams to be designed as flanged beams. Once we click on OK from here, a new column will be introduced on the main design input window where we need to mention the thickness of the flange or the slab which is adjacent to the beam. The flange thickness can be entered either manually or else we can import the slab data from here by going to the file menu and just click on the import slab data. As soon as we click over here, we will be asked to select the RCDC slab file of this same level where uh, whose beam we are going to design. Based on various thicknesses of slab available on either side of the beam, RCDC uses the least thickness for the flange action. So in this case, uh, if this is the beam, then while calculating the effective width of the flange, the program will be using 125 mm. RCDC can design T beams or L beams based on whatever selection we made. Like example, if we want to design the peripheral beams as L beam, we can change to design it as a L beam from here. Now, as per the design principles of flanged actions for a flanged beam, the program uses this action for mid span bottom reinforcement where the flange thickness is calculated as per the individual design code formulations. And we can see that the flexure design that happens uh, for the beam bottom, the flanged action will be considered. The next common setting that we have is the setting related to the designing of beam for biaxial bending and axial force. In this case, beams are designed for combined effect of axial and biaxial moments. So if we select to design the beams for this action, we need to further make settings by clicking on this button more and a setting box will appear in front of us. One point we, we need to note is whenever we design beam for biaxial bending, RCDC would treat to design the beam like a column. So in this setting box here, we will see the design settings which are related to column. The first setting of beam type will help us to tell the program which beams we want to design for this biaxial bending criteria. Let us select the column support on both sides, which are the primary beams to be designed as per this criteria. 
The setting further here helps us to perform the minimum eccentricity check and the slenderness check where the final design moments will be considered to perform these checks. With this setting over here, RCDC allows us to ignore minor direction moment and axial force by providing values, uh, I mean to say maximum values like torsion. The entire beam will be checked in all three zones as per column design logic only. The minimum and maximum percentage of steel that we mentioned over here will be followed for designing the beams with biaxial bending criteria. Let us now check how the design is performed for the biaxial bending and axial force. Now here for understanding how the design happens, I have just created a small video clip uh, which will throw some information on how the design happens in the program. Axial force will have its governance on whether to detail the beam like a beam only or like a column. So in this example, we will see the beam by axial design where the beam gets detailed like a column. That is the actual stress in the beam, which is calculated over here. The actual stress on the beam, considering the maximum PU from all the load combinations, will be checked against the permissible value that has been mentioned in the code. And based on whether the actual actual stress on the beam is greater than or less than the permissible value, the detailing of column or beam will be applied. So in this particular example, our actual actual stress on the beam, which is 2.27, is greater than the permissible actual stress. So the detailing provision of column gets applied for the links. IS13920 in particular suggests to design or detail members like column as per the clause 7 if the actual stress is exceeding the permissible stress. On similar basis, if we see the report from ACI code, the bifurcation whether to detail the beam as a column or a beam remains the same. However, however the permissible value varies from design code to design code. The top and the bottom reinforcement would be checked as per the beam design process, including the effect of the torsion. Further, the minimum eccentricity check and the slenderness check will get performed which is again as per the column. In this table, if we see the reinforcement that has been provided, let us check in the left zone, which is 620, 632, 620 and 416. And let me also open the cross section of the beam from here. Now this total reinforcement in the beam cross section, which is 620, 632, 620 and 416. So if we check, the top reinforcement which is 632 and 620, the bottom reinforcement which is again 620 and the side face reinforcement which are the four bars of the from the side face reinforcement. The entire reinforcement configuration from this cross section of the beam will be considered for performing the moment capacity check. Now once the moment capacity check is performed, the next thing is shear design. Shear checks gets performed separately along both the direction that is for the vertical shear and the horizontal shear. So in this table over here, we can see the shear, uh, design of shear for the vertical shear. That is the shear vertical design. It will try to pro uh, configure and provide the vertical reinforcement. That is the master link and any additional vertical shear stirrups if they are required to tie the top and bottom bars. For the uh, uh, horizontal shear design, we need to note that 50% of the longitudinal reinforcement would be considered for concrete shear capacity and design at that cross section. If we see here, the ASV required for the from the horizontal shear requirement is zero, but still the program has provided a horizontal link which is tying the side face reinforcement. The reason is that since the actual actual stress on the beam is greater than the permissible stress, the beam cross section needs to be detailed like a column. Now, when I say like a column, it means that we need to tie the bars on all the face of the column with some links.
the design of links will happen as per the regular beam design requirements and the side face reinforcement will get provided for two conditions the first is when the detailing criteria of column gets applied based on the actual stress in the beam or when the sfr needs to be provided as per the beam design requirements now let us go back to the design output window here when we go back to the design output window the shear stirrup configuration is mentioned with m and h but there are situations where we can have a similar situation like two legged t8 which is written with v in the bracket now over here M stands for the master link, which is the outer link, which is required as from the shear design requirement. H is the horizontal link, which is this two-legged T8, which is provided just because the beam has to be detailed like a column. And in any case, wherever we see uh, V in the bracket, then those are for the vertical links, which could come from the requirement of the shear vertical design now in the next example we will quickly look into the difference in detailing when a beam detailing criterion gets applied so in this case my actual stress actual actual stress is less than the permissible actual stress so the program has auto identified that the beam needs to be detailed like the beam itself so the only difference we can see here is the additional horizontal links are not provided in this case. So when I open the cross section of the beam over here again, since the beam is not to be detailed like a column, the additional horizontal shear link which was provided in the earlier example is not provided over here. Otherwise, the design philosophy, the design steps remains the same just the detailing of the shear links will change for this particular criteria so that's about the biaxial bending and the best example i would say is a concrete pipe rack so most of these structures like concrete pipe racks which has huge amount of axial force and bending in both the directions in those cases generally the beams needs to be designed for this biaxial bending plus axial force effect Now the next common setting that we have is the detailing style. Now the detailing style is separately available for detailing the top reinforcement and bottom reinforcement. For top we have three options that is best fix, maximum diameter and minimum diameter. And for bottom we have two that is best fit and max dia. The best fit option will be the default style that will be set for top as well as the bottom reinforcement. So when we set this style, all the three zones, that is the left, mid and right. Now this is the top reinforcement columns from the design output window. So for all the three zones, that is left, mid and right, a different diameter will be used as to suffice the actual requirement of the reinforcement in that particular zone. So that's how the best fit works for the max dia for, for the top reinforcement that is the topmost layer of the reinforcement will have same diameter but the diameter that will be used will be the largest diameter that is required from the three zones that is max of diameter from the left zone mid zone and right zone and the min dia works same on the same philosophy of the max dia but as the name itself suggests, a minimum diameter from the three zones will be provided in the topmost layer and whatever extra that will be required on the support for the top, obviously, will be provided in the second layer. For the bottom, we have two options. Best fit, the detailing philosophy remains same. That is, uh, the three zones can have three different diameters based on the design requirement completely. And max dia also works on the same philosophy that is the uh, bottommost layer uh, will have the maximum diameter from the three zones and whatever extra is required for bottom in the mid will be provided in the second layer. And now let us look into some general settings like uh, from here we can set the 
material grades which will be used for design we need to set the top top and bottom clear cover and the clear cover for the side face reinforcement then we have to enter the maximum aggregate tool size this is the size of aggregate used in the concrete and this is used to define the spacing between the two bars that is um, what what should be the spacing that needs to be maintained between the two longitudinal bars from here we can set the minimum and maximum range of diameters that we need to use and the last option available here is set different rebar for outer and inner stirrups the impact of this setting is mainly seen when the beam has a high torsion so generally for torsion like if a beam has a higher torsion the outer link or the master shear link is of a bigger diameter and if we want to separate out the master link diameter from the internal stirrups diameter then we can use this option to different the rebar for outer and inner stirrups and lastly um, we will look into the preferred bar spacing setting this setting allows us to determine or set the number of bars that we would prefer to provide for a particular beam width so the preferred rebar spacing and the number of rebars in the beam of a given width can be set from here the default setting is with reference to a 60 mm vibrator needle which is uh, generally used while concreting and the setting can be done for smaller smaller rebar separately that is for rebars less than equals to 16 mm and for rebars greater than 20 mm and the another setting which is uh, available here and could be considered important in cases where the bending moment in any zone of the beam is zero so at locations where there is no bending moment in any load combination we can select this option that is skip the maximum spacing between rebars for the zero bending moment zones so when we select this option the program will not check the criteria that what should be the maximum allowable spacing between two rebars this is generally applicable for the top mid zone of a beam supported on a column or beam like a primary beam or secondary beam or even a cantilever beam bottom reinforcement can have situations where there is zero bending moment